All right, welcome back for the second part of One Man's Faith. We're going to start looking now at what I call the seven mountain mandate or the seven areas of influence that we can have influence into and that influence us. Religion, family, education, government, media, arts and entertainment, and business. Okay, those are the seven areas. Let's look. Because either we're going to have the we're going to have influence or the world is going to have influence. And if we say nothing, the world is going to have more influence. All right? Now, the first one is religion. What's religion? Oh, well, it's a person that goes to church. Well, yeah, but let me give you the definition. Here's a, here's a definition of what religion is. A set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, usually involving devotional and ritual observances and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. What does that mean? You know, that's the problem with religion. You know, there is religion and then there's the kingdom of God or Christianity. Okay, religion wants to put you under the law, okay, whether it's the Torah law or whether it's other laws. It wants to put you under law. The kingdom wants to put you under grace. There's a big difference between what they do. I'm not a I'm not a, uh, I'm not religious. I'm Christian, <laughs> if I can say that. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the kingdom. And Jesus says, as you go preach saying the kingdom is at hand, then heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. That's part of what we're to do. Christianity, or the kingdom of God, those that are within the kingdom of God, we are the only people that can go beyond just saying, God bless you, or follow this and do that. Because of the power of God within us, we can say, let me pray for you, because my God says that he will heal. Now listen, if, you're, if you are a part of the kingdom and you have a tough time with what I just said, then get into the Word of God and see what it says. See, our lives should be so different that people want to be a part of what we do, not be running from it, but being a part of it. When we become religious, we allow the law to come in and we become bewitched. And we say, oh, it's got to be done this way. Oh, you have drums in your church? That's not right. You know, there, there are uh, sects of Christianity that allow no musical instruments. You know, I, I, if, if you read the Psalms, I don't know how you can have that kind, kind of philosophy or theology. It says with the loud sounding cymbals, with tambourines, with lube, heart, all, the, all these instruments are used. And, we, and yet we try, you know, here's what, here's what I learned a long time ago. And I'm so glad it didn't sink in. That drums are from the devil. Because the beats that are used are the same type of beats that uh, witch doctors and, and, and African tribal leaders used to call evil spirits. I, I, I was taught that. So therefore, we can't have drums. Who invented music? It was God. As a matter of fact... I think part of the reason we've gotten to where we've gotten as far as music is because 
Satan was the head worshiper in God's angelic kingdom. So yeah, he knows how to take music and to use it for his advantage. But we've got to understand that God is the one that developed music, not Satan. And so therefore, God wants, a matter of fact, God even dances over us. Did you realize that? God dances over us. And we're told, matter of fact, one verse says, turn my mourning, my sadness into dancing. And yet we're afraid to allow that in the church. We've allowed, we've been bewitched by the world to think, hey, dancing is secular, it's sensuous, you can't have it in the church. But Miriam and the, and, and the women danced before the Lord when they came out of the, of the Red Sea. Exodus, Exodus 15, I believe, is, is the song of Moses. And it talks about, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider are thrown into his sick. I will sing unto the Lord because God has done all these things. See, God expects exuberance. God wants us to be excited. We should not be going around like we've been baptized in lemon juice. Silent. Oh, that's what's reverent before God. You know, just doing nothing. Don't show any emotions. No. God's emotional over you. And he wants us to be that way toward him. You know, so often, I, you know, if I get into a good football game, even though I'm, I'm not one of those that, you know, I'm not uh, totally into it. I'll watch football, but I like it more when it gets to the uh, playoffs and the, and the Super Bowl. But if you get into a really good game, I mean, you could be sitting there just kind of watching, and all of a sudden it gets down to the last two minutes. There's one point difference, and the team, you know, you know, you know is going for it, trying to get that one point. And you get into it, and when you do, without even knowing it, if they score, you're jumping up and down for joy. That's the way we should be toward God because of what he has done. He has done such great things for you and for me. He has given you life. He allowed you to wake up this morning. He has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare, not for your calamity. He says in Psalm 139 that he has made you, and even before you were conceived, he wrote in his book the days of your life. He already had a plan for you before your mom and dad decided to conceive you. And th he's still waiting for those plans to be brought to fruition. So we've got to be careful. There's another area we've got to be careful in. And that is trying to mix religious aspects with Christianity. There's a a thing going out now called Chrislam. Chrislam. They're trying to mix Christianity and and uh, uh, the Islam, the Islam faith, the Islamic faith. It can't be done. Allah and Yahweh are not the same. It cannot be done. The Islamic faith is not a faith of peace. They have written into their Quran 
that an infidel, and listen, if you've accepted Jesus as Lord, you're an infidel. You are below them. And the, and the Koran says that they are to do away with infidels. When I, I, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Cheryl and Lynn, her husband here, and they were talking about that they were working with uh, the Arab people and that uh, there, there is a payout list for those that blow up people, from blowing up one person to blowing up several or, or multitude of people. There's a payout list that their families get. That is not a religion of peace. Oh, but Neil, that's only, that's only those that are really out there. You can think that. And there are going to be those that say, yes, we're, we are a peace. But if you press them for it and what, their, and what their word really says, they will have to agree that the Islamic faith is out to take over the world and to do away with the infidels because that's the only way they can really take over. We have got to be careful. I, had a, I meant to bring this. I had a business card. I meant to bring it. Uh, and it sounded pretty good until I turned it over. And at the bottom, in very small print, were these symbols. And underneath it, I think it had the term, we are all children of the universe. And this was a card about a person who, do, who would do counseling teaching and other things. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Those are some of the symbols that were on that card. You got, whoops, this side. You got the yin yang, which is, which is, which is Chinese. This, this is uh, uh, the Sikh. Oop, and I'm at break time. And then we got naturally the two Christian symbols. You got you got uh, you got the Islamic faith. Uh, you've got the pentagram right here, which is satanic. And over here is another uh, Buddhist symbol, I believe. They were all at the bottom of this card. I got to take a break, so we'll come back and look at this when I get back. <laughs> 